Hello lovelies and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I am going to be showing you our beautiful autumn books. Now I have tried to change this up quite a bit so I'm going to be showing you books that hopefully I haven't shown in too many other videos but that does not mean that I'm not going to be reading some of the autumn books from my previous autumn book videos this year as well. So I'm going to link those below. So if you want more inspiration, do check those out because I have left out some incredible books that we will be reading. They're just in the other videos. And I wanted to keep this one kind of fresh. So there are some that I have shown in previous videos, but there's also some newer ones. Um, and this year I'm also going to do a another video on our seasonal books so books that really talk about the change of seasons and the reason for this is that I love using those sort of books during the equinoxes so we're coming up to the September equinox or autumn equinox and this is where the day and the night are equal and it's a really beautiful time to talk about the seasonal changes and how seasons work with children. I have quite the collection of stunning seasonal books that cover spring, summer, autumn and winter and that kind of circle of the year. So I'm going to be showing those to you in another video um, because they are just so special and beautiful. I'll also be filming a Halloween book video and I have some incredible Halloween books as well to show you that are gentle and not too scary, great for young kids. So I'll be filming those as well and uploading them. Now, as usual, I always have to have some kind of warning or disclaimer on these videos. Today, this one is that my son Toby is sitting just out of shot of the camera, but he has got a snuffly nose, so he's feeling a little bit unwell, poor Toby, but um, he might be sniffling away in the corner. So if you can hear a weird noise, it's Toby sniffling, although he has promised to be nice and quiet for this video, so we'll cross our fingers and hope it's not too annoying for you who are watching at home. So as always, these books will be linked below. Without further ado, let's get going and I'll show you these stunning books. So first up is definitely a new book. I got this second hand and it's the Pumpkin Book by Gail Gibbons. I love Gail Gibbons books. They're really interesting and factual, great sort of science books for kids. And this one is all about growing different types of pumpkins, um, how it goes from seed to growing and eventually harvesting and then um, the whole thing of a Halloween fair, carving a pumpkin, decorating pumpkins and Halloween. So a lovely little one to introduce children to pumpkins and teaching them a little bit about the scientific facts about how a pumpkin grows and a lovely gentle one for Halloween, especially if you've got children who are kind of scared of the whole Halloween concept. This would be a perfect one because it's more scientific and factual. So I love this book. This is a new book for us. I did purchase it last year, but it came really late. Um, but I'm excited to have this for our entire autumn season this year. And it's Leaf Man by Lewis Elkhart. Um, sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, this is quite a fun book where it goes through all these different shapes and pictures that can be made with leaves. So absolutely perfect for inspiring children to use their imaginations, possibly setting up a quite similar leaf craft um, and really beautifully done. Great colours and loads of interesting things to look at. Um, a beautiful one that both my children love. For autumn, I love to look at some of the themes around harvests and abundance. And Ox Cartman is a lovely one because it is about this family who create all these gorgeous products through the year, like wool and mittens and carving wood, and then they sell them at a market. So it has that sort of seasonal feel, but also um, a little bit like Little House on the Prairie. Really, really sweet, lovely pictures, and also sort of shows that sort of hardworking idea of a farmer working with his hands on her hands all year round and then harvesting and selling it at the end. So very autumnal to me and very, very beautiful illustrations in this book. I really enjoy these Kennard Pack books. This is Goodbye Summer, Hello Autumn. These take you through the seasonal transition from one season to another, just like the name would suggest. There's a short little story, some lovely poetic words and gorgeous illustrations that transition from one season to another. And this one is talking about the transition into autumn. 
The full moon in September is called the Harvest Moon and this book is perfect for teaching children about the different types of moons during the year, their names and why they were named certain things like Harvest Moon. This one's called Hello Harvest Moon by Ralph Fletcher and it's one that we've had for a while but it's definitely one that we really enjoy and I'm looking forward to reading again. There's gorgeous illustrations in this, a beautiful story and just yeah one that we really enjoy reading and exploring together as a family. Lovely sort of dreamy moonscapes, a nice bedtime story this one. So this book is The Apple Cake by Nianke von Hichtum and this is a very sweet story of this old lady who is going out trying to find the supplies to make an apple cake and it's got gorgeous dreamy illustrations, a beautiful folk story and at the end there is a recipe to make your own apple cake. I adore this one. Younger children, I love this Pip the Gnome series by Adma Quant. This is another Florist Books publication. It's about this little sweet gnome called Pip and him gathering up a delicious feast of nuts and berries from the forest for all his friends and at the end they all have a feast together. Very simple but a lovely one for little toddlers and I just love anything with a gnome in it um, and this one's very cute. We're slowly collecting the Elsa Besco books and this one I thought would be perfect for autumn and it's Children of the Forest. Now this book technically could be read at any time of the year because it, it's not really specific to autumn as such but I do think it has got that sort of foresty, mushroomy atmosphere that is very autumnal in my mind. It takes you through the life of these little children as they explore the forest, play with their forest friends. There is a slightly scary couple of pages about a viper who the father actually ends up killing and a hedgehog then takes it off to eat, I believe. Um, and I sort of said to my husband, do you think that's too scary for the boys? But he was saying, you know, that's, that's the cycle of nature. But just to bear that in mind, if you have sensitive kids, you might want to pin those pages together for um, until they're sort of more able to handle it. And there's also a sort of troll that lives under the rocks, which again, might be scary for some children. I just wanted to point that out. But the illustrations are gorgeous. It's a really beautiful story. Um, and at the end they go to school as well. So perfect for back to school uh, atmosphere. So very, very cozy, very cute. And I love everything by Elsa Gabesco. Now this book is new to us as well. It's A House in the Woods by Inga Moore. This one kept popping up on my recommended books and eventually I gave in and purchased it mainly because it was a walker book and I do love walker books and also it's illustrated and written by Inga Moore who has illustrated a copy of our Wind in the Willows which we love. Now the illustrations in this are as dreamy as those Wind in the Willows ones um, so I'm really pleased with that and it's the story of this moose, the two little piglets and the bear who decide to make a house together. The pictures in this are very autumnal, there's lovely sort of orangey golden leaves on the trees and the kind of cozy feeling of building a house together and at the end they all tuck up by the fire and go to sleep so a really nice one actually for bedtime and um, a quite a nice length actually to the story as well and lots and lots to look at so this has actually been a real hit with my boys i have read it to them already and they both really really enjoyed last it last one on our top shelves here is eric carl's the very busy spider this is another board book so great for toddlers and i love eric carl's books and they're a huge hit in our household this one's really clever. It's got this raised spider web line and it's the story of the spider weaving all its different webs. And as you uh, expect with Eric Hull's books, there's some fantastic illustrations in this. Um, and this web becomes more and more larger as the book progresses, but you can also feel the raised edges of the web, which is fantastic. And at the end, we have a beautiful owl and finished web. I kind of see it catching the light there. Um, I know this will probably be my favourite, the favourite book of my youngest son, Toby, because he love Eric, loves Eric Carle's books. And I think this one's very tactile and beautiful. And also uh, spiders are quite autumnal. And at this time of year, if you go for a walk in nature, all the spider webs really glisten in the morning dew and the frost. So I think this one's a really nice autumnal read. Okay, so onto our second shelf. I'll start with this one, which is actually from the library, and it's one of the gorgeous Fletcher books by Julia Rawlinson. This is Fletcher and the Rainbow. We love the Fletcher books. They are so, so cute. 
And this one is actually an autumnal book, although the name Fletcher and the Rainbow might not suggest that, but it, it is. So it's all about these this rainbow, which Fletcher is trying to save. But in the end, he makes um, a rainbow out of fallen leaves and flowers and things like that. And the illustrations are actually very autumnal, beautiful, rich colours, um, lots of things about falling leaves and berries and that kind of thing. So this would be a lovely one for early autumn and actually it would be a great craft idea at the end to copy Fletcher and make a leaf rainbow. So a lovely one, we adore that. And I actually have another Fletcher book, Fletcher and the Falling Leaves. Um, again, I just love these Fletcher books. They're so cute, these beautiful pictures. They're so dreamy. This one's very autumnal as you can see and Fletcher's trying to put all these leaves back on the tree and I think at the end there might be a, is there a, yeah there's a sparkly picture right at the end really really cute I couldn't recommend these Fletcher books enough I think they're so gentle and just lovely books for young children another apple book is Pat, Pat Hutchins 10 red apples this is a really sweet retro book um, with lots of counting in it and these sort of fun little toy figures um, talking about the apples on their trees and it's got this fun little rhyme it's very folky I just couldn't resist the illustrations I thought they were so good and great for a child who's interested in counting um, as my son is at the moment so a lovely book really really recommend this if you uh, want to have a nice autumnal counting book it's absolutely perfect it is Herbs by Eva Marie Ottheidman so these are German books but with no writing inside and the illustrations are incredible in these you can have just a little peek inside oh they're just absolutely my favorite illustrations at the moment I think they're so so dreamy so it kind of takes you through autumn starting off at sort of harvest season and then finishing up when things get really cold and all the leaves are gone. Great for discussing, you can talk about this picture, all the things you see, you can make up stories with this. It's just a great book, uh, definitely one of my favorites. I think I have shown this to you before. Um, this is one from my childhood. It's The Hedgehog Feast by Edith Holden, who is also the author of The Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady. And this one is all about a hedgehog creating a feast and all the um, excitement that happens along the way. It's very, very cozy, beautifully illustrated, and if you like Beatrix Potter books, you'll probably enjoy this one. When I think of later autumn, I always think of owls, and I was actually going to film this video in two parts and do an early autumn book collection and then a later autumn, but then I was kind of worried that I might not get around to filming too, so I've just put them sort of together. But if you're looking for a book that's sort of a little bit more Halloween-y and more got that cold, spooky feel factor to it, I love anything with owls. And Owl Babies by Martin Waddle is a perfect book that's really evocative and like look at these illustrations, they're incredible. And it's all about a group of baby owls who can't find their mummy, the mummy's gone off hunting and they get a little bit scared, um, but of course she comes back at the end. But just look at these pictures. They are so gorgeous. This is a well-loved classic for a reason, because I really think these illustrations just are on another level. They are very beautiful. Now, for those of you watching this, while we're still in the sort of abundant harvest part of autumn, I do recommend Blue Breeze for Sal. Now, this was a book which I purchased for our late summer book collection, which I did forget to film, um, but it turns out to be such a gorgeous book that I've decided to keep it for autumn. At the moment, there are still so many blackberries and things like that on the trees that my boys are obsessed with berries. So I kind of wanted to keep a book that referenced that and um, just, you know, just until the berries uh, go. So I'll probably keep this until about October and then I'll pop it away for next year. But it's the story of little Sal and her mummy. And they go out picking blueberries out on the mountain. But there's also a mummy bear and a baby bear picking berries as well and they all get mixed up together but eventually they find the right mummies in the end and it's just a very sweet story it's all black and white illustrations but really classic and lovely uh, spread at the back very 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 cute and again another classic for a reason it's a great book to us we were gifted this it's an irish book uh, kevin and kate's vegetable book by olivia goodwillie 
and I think this is a self-published book and the boy's uncle gave it to them but I thought it was quite appropriate for autumn and just you know topics of harvest and abundance so it's all about growing vegetables great illustrations and then eventually harvesting them and cooking with them and a recipe for soup at the back and vegetable sticks and things like that um, I just really like the theme of this. I thought it had that sort of cosy autumnal feel factor and you know it has a few pumpkins in there as well. So a nice one for early autumn I think so we'll definitely enjoy this. It's Miss Maple Seeds by Eliza Wheeler. Now this is about a little old lady um, she's very very small and she is basically kind of like a seed carer <laughs> and she has there's a beautiful page here that shows you all the different seeds and their names but she looks after them she scrubs them she polishes them she puts them to bed at night and um yeah it's just very very sweet she's basically got like a seed nursery from what i remember and uh, loads of sweet illustrations it's very autumnal and it's a lovely one for teaching a little bit about seeds and how they work and this time of year obviously so many of the plants have gone to seeds so it's kind of a perfect companion to this time of year. This is the Apple Pie Tree by Zoe Hall. I love the illustrations in this book. It takes you through the whole process of an apple tree as it goes into flower and these gorgeous birds that have a nest in it and eventually we get apples with all the rain there we go summer there's the apples and then the children pick them and make a beautiful apple pie and there's some information there about um how apples grow and how to make an apple pie so really sweet one if you want to make some apple pies this autumn and this is a nice book that you could read before to kind of get your children in the mood for a bit of baking now this one is a non-fiction book but i thought it was well worth a mention actually it's really nicely done it's the usborne woodland book and at this time of year i do feel like the woodlands just are so special and really come alive um, really great time of year to go on lots of nature walks and this book has every bit of information that you'd really need it goes into leaves flowers the different seasons bugs um, tracks of animals insects bark textures um, it's just really really good mushrooms making shelters it's so good um, I got this on Amazon Warehouse for almost nothing and it's just really good. I highly recommend this. This is probably one that will go into our morning basket and we'll take out and we'll do lots of projects with um, for our homeschool sessions for preschool this year. Here's We Gather Together Celebrating the Harvest Season by Wendy Pfeiffer. This says it's filled with facts about the fall equinox. Um, so lots of gorgeous pictures in this. Very factual and scientific. So great for Sightly older children great for unit study if you're a homeschooler and some really fun projects at the back um i can hear toby saying "Ooh, <laughs> he likes to look at this one um these are quite hard to get hold of now these wendy pfeiffer books she has one for um the winter solstice and the spring equinox and the summer solstice but they are quite difficult to find i think this one still is in print and i personally think they're well worth getting because they're so interesting they're really factual um, and it really sort of is great at describing what the equinox is, how people celebrate it in different cultures and the sort of, yeah, the cultural importance of the equinox. That is all our beautiful autumn books for this year. Like I said, I have so many other autumn books. In fact, I'm looking down here because I've got a whole pile of them. Um, but these are the ones I'm going to keep out on our shelves. The rest of them I will probably put in our hallway bookcase and the kids can still read through them. But these ones we're going to make a real effort to read every night. We'll pick one or two to read every night and just, yeah, get really um, excited about the season that's here. Autumn is definitely one of my favourites, so this to me fills me with utter joy for sure. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment because I love to hear from you guys. And also don't forget to check out my Patreon. So I have a Patreon account. It's just patreon.com forward slash Becky O'Cole. It's such a great way of supporting this channel. There are two different tiers. There is just a simple um, three, I think it's like three dollars or three pounds a month. And that's really just a way of like basically buying me a cup of coffee or supporting the channel. It really does help. So um, if you like this channel, please do consider just becoming a supporter through that first tier. 
And then for those of you who love seasonal rituals and herbs, I have a higher tier called Rooted, where each month I do a masterclass on making beautiful remedies with herbs, as I am a folk herbalist, um, and it's really beautiful. So do check that out. I'll link everything below, including my Instagram, other places to go find me. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and have a beautiful autumn. Bye.